that deepest reality. And we pray that our lives will reflect a confidence and trust in God that also knows God as our rock. Sisters and brothers, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mystery. You raise the dead to life in the spirit, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You are pardon and peace for sinners, Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You are light in our darkness, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Oh, 
with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not give what is holy to dogs, and do not throw your pearls before swine, for they will trample them underfoot and turn and maul them. In everything, do to others as you would have them do to you, for this is the law and the prophets. Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the road is easy that leads to destruction. There are many who take it. For the gate is narrow, and the road is hard that leads to life, and there are few who find it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. Lord Jesus Christ. This fascinating uh, first reading about the king of Assyria coming to the very walls of Jerusalem and then not attacking is actually one of the um, odd yet uh, otherwise testified to in regular, which would, I suppose, non-biblical history. Can you imagine having a king with his army come, come to the city of the nation and then not attack? Here, it's not a question of uh, some scribe sitting in the corner somewhere trying to come up with an inspiration. Surely the whole nation had to come to grips with why on earth would someone come with mighty army, the king of Syria, Assyria, and uh, not destroy, not enter the city even. Plague from God is actually the most believable, the most, uh, there's, I cannot, no, I can't think of any other reason why an advancing siege-ready army would not enter the final goal. So it is a fascinating, fascinating thing for me to contemplate. But as I said, I want to reflect with you on that entrance antiphon from the third, uh, Psalm, the third chapter of Psalms, Psalm 30. God is a rock. I forget if it was last year or the year previous at, as I recorded at the Scripture Institute, a uh, local rabbi who also teaches Old Testament at, at Misericordia in, in Dallas gave us a wonderful presentation on the weekly Psalter. And uh, it, 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 again, it was a, I'd like to think there's less epiphany moments for me as I go through life as I was nurse. But of course, uh, when Jesus tells the disciples to pray always, he's not introducing some strange kind of idea, some novel idea to them, to the people of Israel. For those of us praying the liturgy of the hours, the four-week Psalter, we think this was invented by angry old men in Rome, right? It wasn't. The people of God, the book of Psalms, is their prayer book. Uh, and so each, each day had a particular course. The great Sabbath has its particular Sabbath days. But then as the rabbi went through it, it made perfect sense. When we remember the Sabbath until we come to Wednesday, the hump day, when we start looking ahead to the next Sabbath. And so the songs of each day and each hour within the day have their own kind of, uh, of rhythm. And, and it just was, it was just so helpful for me to think the prayers, the, the liturgy of the hours is not some kind of strange framework that has been imposed on the various scriptures themselves, on the book of Psalms and all the canticles throughout all the rest of the scriptures. The people of Israel pray the Psalms. It is, <coughs> it is the church's prayer book, the church's song book. Right? It was nothing, it, it was, and I don't mean to say it was nothing, it was nothing new to the people of Israel to be told to pray always. And that was the glory of the Pharisees. The, the temple was destroyed in the 70 by the Romans. The liturgy of the hours, praying the psalms each day, 
that could survive when all sacrifice ended, when all priesthood, as they understood it, ended, praying the Psalms every day survived. So the rabbi asked us, well, what kind of rock is the Lord? You know, there was nothing. You know, these are people who have been coming for 40 years, so a lot of these people read the Greek and the scripture languages themselves. No one had any idea until he started humming. You got that? Flintstones. The Flintstones, thank you. <laughs> and I said to him, oh, that's what you've been chanting all along. And he looked at me and said, yeah, that's right. So, uh, the Lord, the God is a flint. Think of it, the hardest rock, the rock that you literally strike to bring light and life and health and food and security. God is a flint. In our times where we want to make God malleable, when we want to change God, when we want to give God a new idea, that's insanity. I have to convince God of something to get God to change his plans. God's plan from all eternity is to save his people. The rock that followed them through the desert. And as St. Paul would say, that rock was Christ. We have an unchanging God. God the flint. God the rock that never changes, never abandons his people. And that should fill us with great confidence. We're in a desert experience now. We're in a journey experience now. The best God is a rock. that the church will constantly renew its trust in the goodness and love of the Lord, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our we pray for those who do not have a rock-like presence of God, those whose lives are upended by war, by natural disaster, by loss of the, uh, jobs or homes, and by loss of friends, family members in this epidemic that we will be better witnesses to our God, the rock who follows his people, we pray to the Lord. Amen. We pray for all who study scripture and teach, that God may continue to raise up uh, great teachers for all his people, we pray to the Lord. Amen. We pray for greater uh, bonds of unity with God's with the people of Israel, God's faithful people, that Jew and Christian and Muslim would work for uh, one testimony of peace in the world, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our we pray for our sick, those who suffer in body or mind, for all the sick and their healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our we pray for the intentions each one of us brings to this Mass, especially for the intentions of Ivan and Branka to all glory. For God's continued blessings in all our lives, we pray to the Lord. Lord in thanksgiving to God for graces received, we pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for the dead. God might give all his faith to depart in eternal light and life, peace, we pray to the Lord. Lord God our Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for your faithful love, your steadfast love that has accompanied your people since the dawn of creation. Renew our trust in your goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, which earth has given and human hands have made it to become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine, work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my sisters, my brothers, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands and praise the glory of His name. For our good and all His holy children. May this oblation, O Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Ronald our Bishop, Joseph his Auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters 
who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray. And with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of God's peace. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world, and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world, and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world, and have mercy on us. Lamb of God, we take away the sins of the world, and have Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Sisters and brothers, during this time of communion, I would remind you of our three-step right. Uh, there is a line there. We'll have our dialogue. Body of Christ, amen. Then please come forward, receive the host, step off to the side, remove part of your mask, consume uh, the host. The body of Christ. Mm -hmm. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Mm -hmm. body of Christ. Mm -hmm.
the body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, I want to encourage all the folks at home and uh, Father Peter, the avenging angel, when I said is there a missalette? Of course, those are illegal now. So that missalette was from our video command center, and there's still no paper in our pews. So uh, please, no letters to the editor. Uh, this is a moving target, an evolving uh, situation. Uh, the feast of St. Peter and Paul will be next Monday. So I thank all of you who are present here for this a uh, special time for first effort. I think it's remarkable. I applaud you for your uh, faithfulness. But the Mass on the actual feast day will be Monday at 9. So you can join us uh, here at St. Boniface and we'll celebrate the solemn Mass of uh, the Feast of Peter and Paul. Uh, I will make pina colada muffins. I don't know how you will mark the feast day but I will wrap them up and you can watch them for 72 hours. I'd say put them in the fridge. They'll be blue by the time <laughs> if you don't. But we need to celebrate our feast days and to mark them somehow so that we know this day is different and will be particularly united, especially with uh, the diocese people and the Bishop of Rome on uh, June the 29th. Uh, Again, the special time, I'm so thankful it worked for people. Uh, my agent says this isn't a good idea for me. I've just chopped three hours off my weekend. And now with next Monday being gone, uh, it's not a good trend for me, he says. So uh, 
but thanks be to God, we aren't interested with God in the latest trends. We don't have a trendy God. Our God is a rock, so thank God for that. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thanks be to God. And I'll chant the last two verses. Oh, bless you, Lord. Let all the nations on earth bless the Lord, for the Lord governs all the world. Let all the rulers on earth bless the Lord, worship and praise. Oh, bless the Lord, the God of our salvation, rock of strength and the refuge sure. Oh, bless the Lord, the Oh, bless the Lord, the God of every nation. Oh.